the bliss I get when I enter the temple at, at that moment after all the things I, when I gave my pot of milk it doesn't equate to any hours of meditation that I do so that's why it's so important to me. My name is Komar Velu and uh, I've been carrying Kavati for 18 years. I started out because I made a vow because my dad had a heart attack. So I said that okay as long as uh, he's fine I will, I will carry it every year. But then in my second year or third year my dad passed away. I was actually having a battle with myself. Do I still need to carry? Because my dad was the one who initiated me into Kavadi, into spirituality, into Hinduism and taught me everything that I know. So every year now, why I carry is to thank for a year that had happened instead of wishing for something that's going to happen. Like if I want to change anything in my life, like even when I started my business and everything that I used to do, I always used to only change it after that person. All major decisions in my life are made only after that person. Murugan is thought of as a karmic god. So when you do karma, stuff, which is like uh, acts of devotion, that's how you reach Lord Murugan. And Lord Murugan is thought of as a god of war, the god of youth, god of prosperity and knowledge. Say Edelman was the first guy who carried something for Lord Murugan. So they call it the Edelman Kavadi, which is the one with just a wooden pole with two pots hanging. A more advanced one will what they call a pal Kavadi, which is a wooden arch with two pots hanging on it. Every Kavadi will have pots of milk or things that you bathe the deities with. So milk is uh, considered your heart, it's as pure as white. For Indians or Hindus, the, the cow is a sacred animal and the cow's milk is thought of as the purest uh, liquid that you can find. When you bathe a deity with cow's milk, it purifies the vibration within that. For me, certain things on my Kavadi, uh, certain parts of it, I find uh, it very important for like people who are very close to me to do it. Like I always get my mom's uh, blessings before I start the entire process. Of course, during the piercing, it's like half an hour, you just focus your mind. But there is definitely pain. It, it is needles going through your body. The one on the forehead in the middle of your temple. So that basically is to lock your mind. You are not distracted from anything and your focus is on this point. Like even when, um, when Hindus uh, meditate, it's always on this point. Across your cheek, you're not supposed to eat anything until you reach the goal to lock your taste. On your tongue is to lock your speech and so you don't talk anything ill or anything bad. And then the body is of course to show your love. You want to do something that it's an act of love for the deity that you're gonna finish out with. It's like when you have a wife or a girlfriend, right? You want to get her a special gift that someone else is not given because you want that person to know how special they are to you. And for me, devotion is the same way. It's like act of love towards God, right? So you want your cavity to be unique. <laughs> And then um, the slippers is actually to show the artist's journey that you're going to take to reach him. When you don't have your mind focused on something, you start focusing on the pain and then the pain starts setting in and then you get exhausted. But when someone sings the song, I mean, the voice and the, the beauty of the song has its own vibration. So that charges you up, it gets your adrenaline pumping, you actually forget the pain, you start focusing on the song and you think of God and actually the pain kind of goes away. As exhaustion kicks in, as the weight gets to you and then the heat starts turning up, that's where your, your legs will start cramping, your body starts cramping. So the last leg is always the most difficult. During the process, you do not realize it because you're so charged up and pumped up and everybody's singing, everybody's supporting and then you're so focused on your end goal that you actually go through that journey without actually realizing how exhausted you are. But once you're done and everybody takes everything out, when your body just crashes and you actually realize how exhausted you are. That's actually like life. When you have an end goal, it like you don't care how much obstacles are, what you're doing, you just want to reach that end goal. That's why for me, like, Taipusam is a major 
life change every year because you just think of an end goal and you just work towards it. Every year is like the first year. You're still, when you enter the temple, you still have that excitement of that young boy, that young baby that you were when you saw, when you saw Lord Muruga. On a whole, I think people coming and watching it, trying to understand it and then see it from different perspectives, actually it's better for the festival. And then it, it grows as a festival and then as knowledge gets on and gets shared. And these kind of things exchange, right? People understand each other better. Because I think problems come only when you don't understand each other, right? I mean, the best way to understand it is to follow someone. Like, from the start till the end. And, and, and really, that's understand the entire mindset the person does it with. When you actually take part in it, you will actually realize the beauty of, of the entire process. And when you reach the end temple, and then you feel the vibrations inside, even a non-believer will be like, wow. You will be awed. Every hill belongs to Lord Moriga and his temple is always on top of a hill. What it basically tells you is life is a difficult process. So when you climb up and take the challenges as it comes, and when you reach the final goal is where you'll find bliss. <laughs> Thank you.